We're here at the Orlando International Airport. Behind us is our 172, and we're gonna have to navigate this airport, its airspace, and the multitude of frequencies or controllers that we're gonna have to talk to to get out of here. How do we do it? Where do we look? Hello, my name is Jason from Navigraph. If you haven't already, check our heading video, which we talked about actually the heading section of our Jefferson charts right here. Now we're gonna jump in the aircraft behind us and let's figure out how we're gonna navigate this airport. Okay, let's pull up the Orlando chart and have a look. You can see we have a set of frequencies to tune our radios in order to speak to air traffic control. Since we're in a Cessna, we're parked on the west ramp in Orlando International Airport. Never mind the landing fees here, they're quite expensive. But today we're gonna waive them. The first thing we're gonna look at is the actual weather. That's called the ATIS, or A-T-I-S, Automated Terminal Information System. Again, let's have a listen to the weather. Orlando Airport Information, Sierra 1600 Zulu. Wind 327 at 15. Visibility, 10. Sky condition, few clouds at 3,400 feet, a few clouds at 18,600 feet. Temperature, 16. Dew point, 10. Altimeter, 30 decimal, 10. Once we get the weather in hand, well, now we gotta get clearance to get out of the airport, to actually be cleared out of the Class Bravo airspace. And every airport is different in the United States as well as around the world of different classes of airspace. Please check your local laws to see what that is for you. You can see where it says data calm, and we have a whole bunch of acronyms there. ACARS, DATIS, PDC, TWIP, CPDLC, and finally DCL. What does all of that mean? And basically for us, they're acronyms, but it's a data link. Essentially all these frequencies or all these acronyms are data links to the airport via text. So we actually don't have to talk to ATC sometimes if the airport and the aircraft is equipped with this data link system. So let's go back to the controller data link pilot communications or CPDLC, a very neat function in an aircraft because that means it, it frees up air traffic control frequency chatter. That, that means that you don't have to actually talk to air traffic control. You can text them and they can send a text message to us in our aircraft. Now, some airplanes are capable of this. Usually the jets in 121 or airline style flying will have this capability in their airplanes. Some do not. Our Cessna in our case will not have CPDLC. For those of you who are flying on that sim, however, CPDLC is available and it's very nice to be able to get your clearance via text. Because again, it's very hard to screw that up. In voice communications, it's really easy to mistake an S for another letter or an F for an S. Very interesting and hard when they try to transmit over frequency, especially if you're in another country. Uh, you could have a language barrier there too. So it's important. CPDLC is a great tool to use when those frequencies or the capabilities available at the airport. Okay, so we know what the airport has in terms of communications, in terms of data link communications, but we're in an old Cessna 172. We don't have that information available. So we're gonna have to do it old school, folks. We're actually gonna have to call Orlando Clearance. Now let's look at number three on our chart. And you can see, as we bring the chart up, Number three indicates Orlando clearance, and that's 134.7. Again, we're not gonna tell you how to do so, that's a whole nother lesson, but we're gonna to talk to you about what frequency you'd wanna dial in to get that clearance. And basically, we're gonna be asking for clearance out of the Class Bravo airspace, maybe fly to the south and head over to Key West. Once we have our clearance in hand, the next step is very important, and that's actually taxiing around the airport figuring this out. Now let's bring that up on the chart. That's number four in our chart. As you can see, number four here, there's two frequencies, 121.8, 126.4. Which one should we use? Well, if you look at the chart here, it's broken at west 
and east, just like the frequencies on the chart. Since we're on the west side of the airport, let's go ahead and dial 121.8. Orlando ground, Cessna November 9 or 9 or 4 5 ready to taxi departure to the south with Tango. Cessna November 9 or 4 9 or 4 5 taxi to and hold short of runway 36 right using taxiway Alpha Bravo 10 cross runway 36 left Bravo 10. Contact tower on 124 decimal tree when ready. Taxiing hold short runway 36 right via taxiway Alpha Bravo 10 cross runway 36 left Bravo 10 Cessna 9 or 4 5. Once the taxi instructions are obtained, obviously we want to write that down. We're going to go ahead and taxi to the actual runway uh, using our taxi instructions. Now remember, our next video, we're going to be talking about the airport plan view and actually how to navigate the airport. But in this particular video, it's more about the communication section. So we're going to dial in on the communications. As you can see from our charts, we're going to go ahead and pull up our charts again. You can see, again, tower is split in multiple frequencies depending on which runway we're going to fly. Now we're going to fly 36 right. So we're going to call, I believe it's 124.3 on our chart. So let's go ahead and dial into the tower frequency and get a takeoff clearance. Orlando Tower, Cessna November 9 or 4 9 or 4 5 ready for south departure at runway 36 right. Cessna November 9 or 4 9 or 4 5 altimeter 30 decimal 10 and 327 at 1 at 5. Departure to the south approved. Cleared for takeoff runway 36 right. Now, folks, it's really important when you're on VATSIM or when you're flying in real life to actually listen to the inflections of the air traffic controller's voice. We had a near miss collision if you will, with an F-100 on the runway and a 737-200 landing very close behind him. What happened was the F-100 was cleared for immediate departure and the airplane actually stayed on the runway for quite a long time. There was a 737 on a five mile final. The tower controller told him to expedite um, to expedite their departure because there was a 737-200 on a five mile final. They acknowledged the clearance, they said Roger, and that 737-200 came about 75 feet from actually hitting that F-100. Had to do an immediate go around with the tower controller screaming, go around, go around, go around. Um, and scared. You can hear it in her voice at the time. And it was a scary situation. Uh, the airplane obviously pitched up, did an immediate right turn and got out of there. Uh, talking to the flight crew later, I said, how close do we come to them? It's about 75 feet. So it's important that you listen to air traffic control and know your situation and know what's going on around you. Obviously you wanna check our final approach to make sure there's no aircraft on final, especially on VATSIM. You never know who's gonna be there. Always look and clear your runway before you taxi on an active runway. As we take the runway, we're gonna go ahead and look at the chart again and look at the departure frequencies. 135.3 is departures, Orlando departure rather. And if we were going on a 311 degrees to a 060 degrees, 5,500 feet and below, we would want to contact 135.3. 181 to 310 degrees, that's the southbound route, 5,500 feet and below, we would contact 119.4. That's pretty much going to be our frequency on this departure. Now, when you get your clearance, they obviously tell you which frequency to contact. As you can see, we're flying here on a northbound track. We're gonna start making our turn to the south as the tower controller says, Cessna 9 or 4 5, continue for south departure. Orlando Tower Cessna November 9 or 4 9 or 4 5, continue for south departure. Now, in normal, when you're flying big heavy equipment, normally you're gonna be contacting a departure controller. At this point, you would dial in that frequency, whatever the clearance frequency gave you for departure, and we would call Orlando departure. But in this particular case, FS2020 wants us to maintain the tower frequency and fly southbound, so we're gonna go ahead and do that. Cessna 9 or 4 5, leaving my airspace frequency change approved. Orlando Towers, Cessna November 9 or 4 9 or 4 5 frequency change. 
as you can see, the tower controller is now saying, we're out of their airspace, and to contact another frequency. Usually, it's a common traffic advisory frequency, or at this particular case, it's flight following. It's seeing and avoid rules here as it's VFR. Join us on our next video segment when we actually talk about how to navigate this airport. It is a massive airport, and there's a lot of things to know and learn if you have not already yet done so. Ensure that you have a subscription to Navigraph. I think we got the best charts around, so definitely take a look at those charts. They're fantastic, so you can follow along on our lessons. Again, my name is Jason from Navigraph. We hope you enjoyed this lesson, and until next time, happy flying.